is is about the the architectural style of the building and how that relates to the town center zone and the rest of the town center um, the site issues were discussed as an overview and I think it would be appropriate to have an overview given the, the uh, size of the audience tonight and the viewing audience that may not have attended the, the uh, workshop meetings to at least get a introduction uh, to that scope of the project Are I don't you suggesting at the present time or for the next meeting I, I think it would be appropriate at this time yes mr. Demers okay. I will give you a brief run through of the elevations and plans of the building. Very um, good, thank you. Uh, we've designed this building to uh, comply with the, the town center ordinance, and that town center ordinance has within it um, quite a lot of, of inferences to other buildings in town or to other areas. It has to be compatible with certain things. And we tried uh, with the talking with the town planner and, and others to determine what compatibility was, <laughs> okay? And so this is our attempt at what we thought was compatible. Uh, I understand that compatible means different things to different people, but... Uh, Let me put this up higher. One of the concerns we had uh, was how to make this building compatible. What that means is we took a look at the several other buildings in the downtown area that were deemed to be, uh, uh, have some architectural quality about them which made people think that this was the town center. And those buildings were like the city hall, there's a couple of buildings where <laughs> down towards the, towards the intersection. Uh, that have some uh, some uh, nice detailing, some uh, historical aspects to the to the quality of the building. Um, even though they're not adjacent, except for the town hall, there's adjacent buildings on the other side of the street which are not, we think, compatible to downtown <laughs> uh, Cape Elizabeth. And so, what we tried to do is get a building that was um, Faced on, it has to face on Route 77. That's according to the code. It has to be 25 to 35 feet back from the road. That's part of the code. It has to be 5,000 square feet. That's part of the code. It has to be 35 feet high within the, 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 uh, the way it's supposed to be figured. That's part of the code. Um, the code also says that certain things like uh, it has to have uh, an uh, uh, entrance, the perceived entrance main entrance off of the front of the off of the street that it faces, although other entrances can be on the side. Uh, it has to have detailing that re reflects the other detailing in the area, like columns and, or uh, porches or, or, or kind of almost residential quality kinds of things. That, and so all these things are what we tried to put in this building uh, to make it uh, uh, part, of the, part of the town center. Um, the top drawing here shows the existing city hall, or town, town hall here. The parking lot, and this is in scale. To, here's our building that we propose here. Um, it's shown covered with trees in the front, and that's, there's good reason for that. These are trees which are there. We went out and measured the trees in the front of the building. There are, there's about 30 feet between the roadway and the property line. There's another 25 feet back to this face of the building. We've stepped the building back so that we're back maybe 25, another 30 feet. So we're 80 feet back to this portion of the building. So that's a lot of trees that we've saved in the front of the building to, to temper that, that building. So when you drive down Route 77, this building be, appears behind those trees. The spot that is closest, which is this first piece of the building here, which is 50 feet from the road, uh, still is further back by about 15, 20 feet than the existing this building we are in now. It's, it sits, this building sits closer than is legal <laughs> right now. Um, so that's first part is it's set, it's set back in the woods, uh, 
so that the, the woods part stays as part of the downtown area as well. Um, we've detailed the, the size of the windows and the, and the areas of, of uh, window to non-window area to be approximately what the town office is. Uh, the detailing is similar in quality to the town office and to some of the other buildings down at the, at the main corner there that show uh, kind of elements of, of uh, even a residential-ish kind of a nature. Uh, we've set back the building such as like the, uh, the uh, cabinet shop back there which has the main building which is the little house close to the road and the rest of the building is, is set back so that you don't notice that's a, an 8,000 square foot building across the street there. Um, but those, those kind of, of ways to approach this project so that it, it gives a, a nice appearing and uh, I would like to think uh, uh, scale wise a correct appearing uh, uh, elevation on Route 77. Um, the, as, as we go around the side, we, we, the site slopes down, there's a high point in the road about in here between between this building and the site, almost on the property line is the high spot, and it slopes down gradually to a point where we can exit an entrance across the street from the the uh, fire station or that road runs back to the public works building there uh, on grade, so we don't have to cut any trees or cut uh, do a large amount of cutting of the of the ground, so we can exit an entrance there, uh, and that's about on the same level as the parking lot in the back, so we can uh, contour that parking lot and save the trees that have to be saved back there without, uh, without much difficulty because it is relatively flat and we're keeping it the relatively the same elevation. Um, we aren't changing the ground level too much. That's a, we want to be uh, conserving the existing trees. And that's one of the reasons we tried to do this so we didn't have to worry about chopping a lot of earth out and moving it over there and cutting fill and play with the elevations almost the way they are so that we can save trees, and, uh, as many of them as we can. Um, and I think that's generally what we're after. I don't just Thank you. Thank okay. you very much, Mr. Numbers. <clears throat> yes, Mr. Can I just clarify one thing? Um, Mr. Numbers' uh, uh, summary was, was great, but I didn't want the uh, people that aren't here to think that the buildings in the town center zone have to be have to have a footprint or footprint of 5,000 square feet. It has to be less than that. And the building height, they don't have to be 35 feet high. They have to be less than that. So just a point of clarification. Thank you, Mr. Parkhurst. OK, we've uh, got some incomplete applications here. Does the applicant have any further questions of us? Uh, are you fairly clear about what needs to be done in order to have yes, a complete Mr. application? I believe so, and I think we're going to be talking with the town planner quite I would heartily that. suggest that she's usually a fairly good source of information. So, excellent. I'm sorry, did we not vote on the... No. I beg your pardon. I interrupted. I'm rushing to judgment. Um, it has been moved and seconded that the application, that this portion of the application be deemed incomplete. Uh, any further discussion? All in favor, raise your right hand. It is unanimous. Okay, thank you for reminding me. And we'll probably see you next month. Oh, thank you. We're not doing Oh, oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. Sure, sure, sure. 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 Okay, last but not least. This is the last item on the
While we're clearing out the last application and uh, beginning to take the last, the fourth item on the agenda, I want to announce uh, one more time that originally we had a fifth item on the agenda, which was the town center district text change. Uh, it was a referral from the town council to comment on a proposed text change, deleting consideration of impacts. <coughs> The applicant, the Cape Elizabeth Land Company, uh, has requested that that te text change be withdrawn, and the Planning Board has uh, tabled that matter until the next meeting pending some instructions from the Town Council. So that will not be on the agenda this evening. The last item on the, uh, the last item to be taken up, I should say, this evening is Dyer Pond Lot 1 driveway, a request by Michael Roy for permission to use the Weir access lane off of Dyer Pond Road as the driveway for Lot 1 in the Dyer Pond <coughs> subdivision. Would the applicant like to proceed? Introduce yourself, give us a name and address, and yes, tell thank us you. about the application. Good evening, members of the board. My name is Jim Fisher. I'm with uh, Delorier and Associates, surveyors and engineers out of Scarborough. I'm here this evening to uh, uh, work with and represent Dr. and Mrs. Roy regarding their request to be able to use uh, for a driveway uh, to a house to be constructed on Lot 1 uh, an existing woods road that was created by the Department of Public Works to access a weir that is located just to the north of the property. There is an existing easement across Lot 1. This is, property is located at the corner of Dyer Pond Road and Shore Road. Uh, there is an existing easement that was created from Dyer Pond Road. Uh, as you can see on this plan, uh, in this area following this dashed and dotted line, that essentially follows the existing woods road. This is the line uh, that forms this, uh, the sharp S coming right from the northern end of the property over to Dyer Pond Road. Uh, our request is um, several fold. Uh, first, obviously, is to be able to use that existing easement, which is described uh, uh, for the Woods Road that was created by DPW for the weir, uh, for the actual driveway. Uh, another part of this request is to actually change the easement just slightly to be able to uh, actually follow the center line of the existing Woods Road as it was created. As you will notice from the plans uh, that you had earlier, and also in a smaller scale in the plans that we just passed out, uh, the existing easement as it was created does not actually follow the Woods Road. The Woods Road was ostensibly created by Department of Public Works after the easement was created as a part of the original subdivision. What we would like to do here is actually change the verbiage of the easement uh, to follow actually the center line of the Woods Road and then that easement would also be used uh, for the driveway to the existing house, uh, the imprint of which you will see up in this area on your original plans. Another part of uh, our request is uh, addressing the actual pedestrian easement, which is part of the Cape Elizabeth Greenbelt. Currently, this easement is one and the same with the, uh, essentially with the Woods Road or with this easement shown here uh, for pedestrians and for the Department of Public Works to be able to access that weir. What we are proposing and what you have before you are two options. The first option is to uh, allow the, or to have the pedestrian easement for the Greenbelt coincide with the existing easement uh, or the new easement that we are proposing to follow this woods road for the benefit of uh, pedestrian access, ingress and egress along that green belt. That is listed as option A, uh, as you'll see on your plan. Option B also addresses specifically uh, the easement, so the pedestrian easement itself, but it, it, it addresses it separately from the actual easement for uh, ingress and egress for the Department of Public Works and the driveway. This is listed as option B, and this is the area that you can see on this plan and on your plans. Uh, on this plan, it is highlighted in uh, orange. Now, one of the things that we did not have at the time of the submission, but uh, have passed out to you in the, in the smaller scale form, uh, is the delineation of the wetlands. These were mapped very recently, just uh, last week, uh, and we have identified them, uh, we, DeLorean Associates, has identified them for the benefit of uh, individuals to see where the actual proposed easement under option B actually crosses these RP2 wetlands. And you can see that there are a couple of more minor sections, uh, it's approximately 10 feet, 5 feet, about 30 feet, et cetera, uh, crossing these RP2 wetlands, uh, over which under option B only, uh, mind you, uh, there would be a uh, creation of the trail, a mulched trail, approximately 5 foot in width within a 20-foot wide actual pedestrian easement 
uh, and then bridges that are crossing these uh, wetland areas. That is a brief overview of uh, what, we're, what we are requesting uh, this evening. Uh, specifically, the end result would be uh, for the planning board to uh, grant its approval to the town council, uh, because obviously the town council needs to uh, approve any uh, amendments to any easements. Uh, for the new access easement and its use by, uh, as a driveway uh, by the Roy's. Uh, also that the pedestrian green, uh, green belt easement uh, by whatever option uh, be approved as well and then pending the performance of a uh, guarantee, uh, performance guarantee, uh, to be set up in the form of an escrow account of the town uh, prior to, or for the trail construction, uh, prior to actually uh, the building permit being issued, uh, that that packet be deemed complete. Are there any questions or comments that I can answer for anyone? Thank you very much. Any questions of the applicant? Okay, we're again uh, looking at completeness. So, Maureen, could I prevail upon you one more time to? Well, you can, but um, the town attorney has determined that the standards that the planning board should be using to review this at request should be the 1989 zoning ordinance. And so I have uh, included, it's, uh, let's see, it's about four pages from the back of the memo, mm -hmm. the two pages from the 1989 zoning ordinance that apply. If you'll go to the page that has a big black bracket on the uh, right-hand side, that's the whole section that deals with uh, the planning board's review. And as you, as you read uh, paragraph C, uh, it just says that, uh, and submission of a complete application including all information requested. There is no specific list of information for me to prepare a checklist upon which I can uh, recommend whether or not this application is complete. So um, the board uh, is, is basically left to your own devices. Well, fancy that. Uh, any conversation about completeness? Mr. Parkhurst. I'd like to make a motion. Mm -hmm. Motion for the board to consider. Be to order that based on the plans and materials submitted and the facts presented the request of Michael and Don Roy for planning board approval to use the Weir Access Road located on Lot 1 Dyer Pond Road as a driveway to a single family home be deemed complete. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Mr. Emery. Any further discussion? We are moving right along. All in favor of the application being deemed complete, raise your right hand. It's unanimous. Okay, with respect to substance, um, are we interested in how, how would you like to proceed? Is there any further discussion with respect to the substance of the application? I have a couple of questions. Mr. Emery? Um, the, uh, on the larger plan, the uh, proposed building envelope is indicated as uh, overlying the Woods Road. Is it the uh, intent that the, uh, I remember we discussed this at workshop, that the Woods Road would be uh, terminated and that the uh, town's vehicles would use your driveway to turn around and exit the site? The, uh, <coughs> the way it works is the, 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 that sort of spur that where the road curves and heads towards where we're proposing to put the house was, I believe, built as a temporary road to facilitate construction. The actual direct access to the weir uh, proceeds straight from that curve directly to the weir at the corner of the lot. Uh, so the, the actual present uh, access is not taking a left and cutting through the woods. It's actually going straight. Uh, there's a separate sort of easement along the back property line uh, that encompasses that little area, the access to the weir. I see that, the 50 foot the right. weir is in the very corner. Okay. Exactly. Um, <clears throat> I guess I'll be consistent with um, the comments I made at the uh, board meeting. Uh, the applicant has expressed absolutely no concern about sharing the driveway or having the dri driveway shared uh, with uh, uh, the, the green belt and, and uh, pedestrians. Uh, however, um, 
we discussed at the, at the workshop the issue of subsequent uh, buyers of the property, uh, even if this becomes a family estate for the next two generations at some point. And my concern is, and it's been expressed, I think, in some of the correspondence we received, that there's always that concern where it's a green belt, that somebody is going to feel as though they're trespassing on private property, or at some point it may um, become a nuisance. Uh, I mean, I, I think it's quite a yeoman's uh, effort here to be making this sort of investment and not minding that town trucks will roll up occasionally and turn around and all the rest on a nice quiet Sunday afternoon or something. But, I'll, you know, that's between you and the town. That's fine with me. But I, uh, I would like to see the, uh, the, the pedestrian, uh, the green belt, apart from the, the driveway for, the, for two purposes. One, so that people feel invited to use it, that, it, that anything can happen with a house or with a driveway, whether you want to enhance it or whatever the agreement is. And it doesn't affect the, uh, the green belt. It always, also provides some privacy for you as a homeowner. Um, but I want to make that a, a reasonable request, and I, I would really look to the uh, Conservation Commission's uh, recommendations and, and uh, members of the Greenbelt Committee in terms of aligning that. And, and I see in the correspondence that the uh, Conservation Commission has supported relocation of the uh, trail with the understanding that the applicant would be willing to provide the crossings. Uh, is, that, is the applicant indeed willing to provide the crossings is my question. Absolutely. You're talking to an Eagle Scout here who loves to cut trails. And okay. uh, it, there are, as I, I think, uh, as we've uh, proposed this option B, um, the, the actual amount of work is actually minimized uh, as we've been, you know, fortuitously able to uh, site the path with fairly minimal crossing of wetlands. So the, the actual amount of uh, say boardwalk that's needed to be constructed is minimized. Uh, I certainly welcome input from uh, from the Conservation Commission if they have a better idea. But I, I our feeling was that this location for option B uh, maximizes the privacy, minimizes the discomfort issues, and and uh, also minimizes any uh, crossing of wetlands uh, for that trail. Um, I, I would point out that I think both options. Uh, do seek to make a trail that is distinct and separate from our driveway, one obviously more so than the other. <coughs> the uh, option A path would actually be routed uh, approximately 50, it's a little hard to see here on this smaller plan, but 50 or 60 feet proximal to the driveway, in other words, closer to Shore Road, uh, and there would be a green belt plaque there indicating that that is the um, entrance to the green belt uh, at that location and it would sort of as, as the current path does sort of diagonally meet up with a path that runs not on the driveway but actually separate from the driveway uh, and along the whole course until it exits at the northern terminus of the, of the path so our feeling was that both of these give you an option in terms of having a distinct separate path one is more distinct than the other and um, our our feeling is that we're fairly ambivalent and fle willing to be flexible about either option, which whatever the board decides is, is the best. Thank you, Mr. Roy. I'd like to uh, note for the record once again that the Conservation Commission has done us a lovely service by um, uh, giving us a memorandum with respect to the items that are on our agenda this evening. I'd also like <coughs> to take note of the fact that John Green from the Conservation Commission is here tonight. I don't know if you feel like uh, making any particular presentation, John, but we would be certainly happy to hear from you if, uh, if you were so inclined. <laughs> Hello, my name is John Green. I'm chair of the Conservation Commission. Um, just briefly, uh, we totally agree with the idea of, of uh, uh, relocation uh, given uh, the existing wood, Woods Road makes the most logical sense. Um, I would like to point out we would like to work with the applicant. Um, the Commission would like to go on the site and actually look at the options uh, as opposed to being offered two options. Uh, we feel that there may be other options available uh, in working with the applicant through the Commission since we have worked in that area. Uh, we would prefer just going out uh, with a site visit and um, locating a trail as we see appropriate to tie in uh, to the existing network. 
Um, so we don't want to limit ourselves to A or B. We would consider there to be a C, which is an option in between, possibly. Thank you. Excuse me, John. Would you uh, anticipate being able to locate that in the next 30 days, or would this be something that you'd like for us to simply, um, uh, if we were so inclined, to have a condition that just said the Conservation Commission and the applicant would uh, mutually agree on the location? I think uh, given the applicant's willingness to uh, work with us, I think we would be happy with, with that. That would be fine. Um, we would be able to go out in the field and, and uh, work with the applicant to cite something that's uh, mutually beneficial. Thank you. And I take it that is what's acceptable to you as well, Mr. Roy. Okay, fine. Any further discussion from the board members? That suggests it sounded great, but I think Maureen has to have the final, or, or the town has to have final. Yeah. Yeah, okay. I thought so, too. I thought. <laughs> so, I guess, well, may I hear some more discussion on this uh, application? I guess it, it occurs to me that uh, notwithstanding the snow on the ground, if this is something that can be accomplished, uh, I think we, we would need to have a location for where this path is and um, or is suggested to be. So if you and the Conservation Commission could get together fairly soon and um, detail that, I think it would probably be a help to all concerned. Any, yes, Mr. Carlson. As I make a comment, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, we've got some Litter, some mail, I think, and there's been some references. I recall that this is a 10 acre piece of property, and certainly a Dr. Roy could locate it somewhere else. I think that particularly those people are not quite informed of what wetlands is all about. And if you look at, the, at what we have before us this evening, it's quite limited uh, as far as the wetland seems to, to account for about two thirds of the property. And then to give privacy from Dyer Pond Road and from Shore Road the house is set back. So I just wanted it to be people out there to know that this is a 10 acre piece and that's a lot of property, but it's somewhat limited to where uh, the house can be located. Uh, that's my only comment. Thank you. Thank you. I uh, just asked the town planner whether there was, um, number one, any interest uh, demonstrated in the community with respect to a public hearing, and number two, what we um, were and were not required to do with respect to a public hearing since we're operating under the 1989 zoning ordinance. Uh, uh, Maureen tells me that it's quite vague, and that is what it appears to me. So I'd, I would like to hear from the board about how we might like to proceed from here. Mr. Emery. Uh, we've had a lot of letters in the package from uh, the neighbors supporting uh, this, this proposal, so I really don't see any need for a public hearing. We have the Conservation Commission representing the uh, uh, Green Belt interests, and we have letters from the town manager uh, regarding the use of the wood road, so I, I think I don't see any need for a public hearing. And there's no opposition that, that we're aware of? That's correct or not correct? You, you received letters of opposition as well in your package. This there were a couple of letters. That's right. There was, I think, at least three that I remember of. But those were more concerned with using the driveway rather than relocating it somewhere else. <clears throat> uh, just like to point out okay. one of the letters. Excuse me, Mr. Sorry. I'm sorry. One of the letters which was opposed to this, there were no has a statement in here. This letter is from uh, Ann Longcusen, and uh, she makes reference to the town manager saying, has used sound judgment in recommending that the town deny Dr. Roy's request. Uh, that's not true. In, in uh, town manager's letter, uh, he approves of it. So that's one denial that there. Um, Again, as I made reference to earlier about the size of the property there, there, surely 10 acres offers more than one location for a driveway. I think that's uh, quickly taken care of there too. Um, there is someone here from Ms. Carol House 
in reference to um, <coughs> setting precedent, I suppose, is what the letter is about. And uh, that's the only no I see. There are some approvals here. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Carlson. Mr. Parker? I just want to say I want to echo Mr. Emery's comments. I really think we're, the need for a public hearing is probably just doesn't exist. Any further comments or discussion? Yes, Mr. Wilcox. Um, I think that the uh, evolution of the application has been fairly admirable, and one that is uh, is sort of I don't, I don't think I could have in invented uh, a better sort of uh, progress on it, uh, given the fact that um, there is a trail there. I think we, we see that on the plan here, highlighted in yellow. And it even, uh, the, the first thing I noticed was, especially with the snowfall, that uh, having both within, even within the same easement, even though separate, uh, in terms of snow storage and things like that, there really is only five feet in between them, so this, this alternate root thing really makes a lot of sense. But uh, the, the, the first thing that, that dawned on me was uh, I think that a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, latitude should be given to the Conservation Commission here to compare the existing trail, which looks sort of convoluted and may not perhaps be uh, the easiest way to walk from point A to point B across that property, and there may be a way to accomplish the same thing in the same general location that would require fewer boardwalks and bridges, and that probably can't be determined until that actual inspection is made. And I, I for one, would, would be in favor of this board just delegating that as a condition to uh, the Conservation Commission and town staff. Uh, I would then uh, think that it might be worthwhile for us to spend uh, a minute uh, and perhaps with the applicant also discussing uh, the need for an escrow account in the co uh, equal to the full cost of all the bridges if we don't really even know how many bridges there are in the first place uh, and uh, how, how vital that is given the fact that we have uh, a, uh, an applicant who has come forward and uh, revised plans and willingly proposed uh, something that is more in the town's interest as, as judged by the town. So I think that's worth a little discussion. Would the applicant like to respond? Um, as, as to that issue, um, I, I don't have a problem um, with a, some sort of performance bond or an escrow account or whatever. Um, as Maureen informed me, uh, this was not a reflection on me. <laughs> it was... Uh, <laughs> And please don't take it. <laughs> and uh, I'm perfectly comfortable with that. I understand, you know, procedures are procedures, and people have reneged on, on uh, the best of intentions in the past. And uh, I, I can stand here and tell you that's not going to happen in my case, but, you know, that in 25 cents might get you a cup of coffee somewhere. Uh, you know, I, I, I'm more than happy to, uh, to, to go along with that. That's fine. So um, then I guess I'd like to ask for a point of information. How soon do you think you can meet with the Conservation Commission and actually uh, have some agreement about where the path would be? Uh, I'm actually out of town tomorrow, um, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, I mean, this week, other than tomorrow. Thank you, Mr. Roy. Sure. Um, do you feel comfortable? I should ask the town planner on the record, do you feel comfortable <laughs> in having a deferral to you? I guess it's, uh, it's um, well, I'll um, ask the question. Yeah, I'd, I'd like to remind the board that uh, we have done this in the past, uh, specifically on the Dominicus Crossing proposal. Uh, trail locations were shown, uh, but there was a note added to the plan that said the actual location of the trails would be field located by the Conservation Commission in concert with the applicant. So uh, my recommendation would be to, if you're leaning toward option B, would be to approve option B with the condition that it actually be located in the field by the Conservation Commission and the applicant. Which very carefully gets the town staff out of it. 
I'm staffed to the Conservation Commission, too. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Any further discussion on this application? <clears throat> Do I hear a motion? Uh, if I may, before we uh, motion anything. Um, Excuse me, sir? If I may. Oh, yes. Uh, just before we uh, produce a motion. Would a letter from the Conservation Commission then suffice as far as their uh, back up here a little bit? Our interest is to try to uh, be able to break ground on the, uh, the house as soon as possible. And obviously the access to that would be uh, across the driveway as we have indicated our, our uh, only ability really to get there. Toward that end, and rather than waiting toward another meeting, uh, if that's what the motion was about, would a letter from, would suffice uh, as far as the Conservation Commission is concerned? And can we then address uh, the town council regarding changing the existing easement to the actual center line uh, or 10 feet on the either side of the center line of the existing woods road and uh, then have the recommendation from the planning board be that a, a building permit would be issued toward that end without speaking for the code enforcement officer like to, go ahead. Um, one approach that the board could use which would mean that the applicant doesn't have to wait for the next planning board meeting or for the next council meeting would be to adopt a motion with conditions that leave the location of the uh, trail up to the Conservation Commission. And all you need to do then is, is work as quickly as you can with the Conservation Commission to agree on the trail location. Typically how this has been handled in the past is the Conservation Commission chair has called me and said, I met with them and, and we are happy with the way it's going to be located. And, and that's been sufficient. Um, as far as the easement uh, goes, uh, my recommendation would be not to officially relocate the line, but only to expand the easement where the, the road goes beyond where the easement is supposed to be. If you were to propose uh, an easement that just expanded what we already have, uh, that's something the planning board typically has been able to approve, and you could move ahead with that. Yes, the council needs to act on it, but the council doesn't need to act on it before you could move ahead. It's something that the board has done in other easements. Is once you propose it to the board and, and it's been approved, you, what you do is you draft your easement, you get it to me, I get it reviewed, and, and you're ready to go. Once it's in good shape and then we get it to the council, but it's, if you have to change the current easement that's already been accepted by the town, you've got to wait until the next council meeting. By change, you mean not just expand, but eat into in some way. Right, relocate. I mean, if you're just adding, it's, it's like granting us additional easement area, which the planning board can approve that subject to the, count, the council's approval, but it's sufficient for you to go ahead and get your building permit. I understand. Um, and, and I guess I don't have any uh, strong objection to that. I guess I'm wondering if we're mixing the two issues a little bit, because it seems as though the issue of the the weir access lane not actually matching up with the legal definition of the easement was something that sort of came about as a result of this review. But is that necessarily a condition of permission for our, I mean, are, are, these, are these two issues linked? Uh, I, I'm willing to pursue changing the easement on a separate track. I mean, we've just sort of found this out, but does it, is it really germane to our request? Uh, and I, I leave that up to you. <clears throat> well, typically when the board has found an issue like this, they've tried to address it. And usually they try to have it addressed before someone gets their building permit, since they're okay. much more eager to address it at that point. Again, don't take it personally. Right. That answers my question. <laughs> uh, if, uh, if, if that's the case, then I, I would uh, uh, not have, we would not have a problem with expanding uh, the easement to accommodate the current position of the of the lane, uh, so that they indeed do match up, sort of. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Roy. Any further discussion, questions, comments, Mr. Emery? I'm trying to think. This easement is uh, the owner uh, of the property has granted an easement to the town to gain access to the uh, to the parcel. In return, the town is granting access over the town's uh, road to uh, access the house lot? Technically, I think that's the way it would work. Did, and the town constructed the road, is that correct? The, the, the developer constructed Oh, okay. The road. Never mind then. Uh, just a point of clarification. Whatever they want to do with the easement is fine with me. 
Uh, with respect to the Conservation Commission, and uh, uh, my understanding is the Conservation Commission working with the owners will go out and they'll, they'll locate the trail. Uh, upon locating the trail, will the uh, applicant be required to provide an easement description for the trail? I would hope so. That would okay. certainly be something I would be interested in. Is that a condition of getting a building permit or an occupancy permit? Maureen, you want to help us out? Both, I believe, both have a lot of incentive. I believe the assumption was as long as the new trail is in the buffer area, the town already has a legal right under the buffer area easement to p install trails. So okay. I don't believe we need an additional easement for the trail within the buffer area. As for when something is done, um, that's, that's up to the planning board. My recommendation is to get those types of things that you actually care to have happen done prior to the issuance of the building permit. Uh, we've had very uh, poor success with uh, getting conditions satisfied as a, as a matter of a, a certificate, certificate of occupancy, just because at that point in time, a lot of other things are more important. Then, you know, the planning board approval happened a long time ago. People have forgotten about it. Okay. Not you, though. If I may, however, toward that end, if there is an escrow account set up for that, it really wouldn't seem, again, germane to uh, hold either a building permit or withhold a building permit or an occupancy permit because the monies are actually going to be there already. That's true because there would certainly be a review at the time that the escrow broke to make sure that the conditions were complied with at that point. Any further discussion? If not, do I hear a motion? Mr. Emery. Uh, findings of facts. Michael and Don Roy are requesting planning board approval to use the Weir access lane on Dyer Pond Road, lot one, as a driveway to a single family home. Uh, two, the town attorney has determined that the request should be reviewed for compliance with wetland alteration standards in the 1989 zoning ordinance. Three, the Weir access lane is part of the pedestrian green belt is not entirely located within the town's easement. And four, the request substantially complies with section 19-2-8C of the 1989 Cape Elizabeth Zoning Ordinance. Therefore, be it ordered that based on the plans and materials submitted and the facts presented, the request of Michael and Don Roy for planning board approval to use the Weir Access Road located on Lot 1 Dyer Pond Road as a driveway to a single family home subject to the following conditions. Uh, one, that the area of the Weir access lane easement be expanded to include the actual location of the Weir access lane. The easement shall be submitted to the town planner and town attorney for review and approval. Two, that information regarding the culverts to be installed shall be submitted to the town engineer in accordance with his letter dated 11-10-97. Uh, three, that the pedestrian trail designated uh, Shall we call it option C? It's described as option C? Option B to be located by the town okay. conservation commission. Okay. Field located. That the pedestrian trail designated option B be field located uh, by the town's conservation commission. Uh, all, over all areas constituting RP1 or RP2 wetlands is mapped by the applicant using wetlands definition contained in the current 1997 zoning ordinance. Pedestrian bridge or boardwalk shall be constructed by the applicant. No building permit shall be issued until the boardwalk and bridge areas have been constructed or until the length and cost of boardwalk has been estimated by the applicant and conservation commission. Uh, estimated by the applicant approved by the town engineer. Uh, and the Conservation And Conservation Commission. A performance guarantee in the form of an escrow account shall be established with the town by the applicant for the full cost of constructing the trail, including boardwalks, bridges, and signage. Um, four, that no building permit be issued until the above conditions have been met. Is there a second to the motion? Second. Parkhurst, uh, uh, one little comment on the on the motion. Um, you said it would be field located by the Conservation Commission, and should that be in conjunction with the property owner? Mm -hmm. That's correct. In conjunction with the applicant. And Sorry. And constructed. 
The first sentence of number three, then, is that the pedestrian trail designated option B be field located by the Towns Conservation Commission in conjunction with the applicant and constructed. Uh -huh. That's a amendment, a proposed amendment to the motion. Mr. Emery, you'll Sorry. accept mm -hmm. that. I also have a proposed amendment to the motion, and that is up in the therefore be it ordered section, the intro section. I think there are just a couple of words missing in line four. As a driveway to a single family home, comma, be approved would be the two words submitted and then subject to the following conditions. Is that acceptable to you, yes, Mr. Emery? Yes, Fine, thanks. If I may, as a point of clarification. Please. What exactly is field located by the Conservation Commission? Just flagging? Uh, I mean, literally walking and flagging the area? or? Okay. Maureen, would you like to comment? Well, we've used that term in the past to mean that the Conservation Commission is given great latitude and located where it's supposed to go. And uh, in other words, it does not have to follow the orange line. But if it does cross any of the RP2 wetland zones and we need to know where those bridges are going to go, we've got to have something. And that's why it says in conjunction with the applicant. Yeah. You're not, you're not at their mercy, they're not at yours. <laughs> you'll meet with them out in the field and you'll walk it and you'll come to an I don't think you've ever had a problem with coming to an agreement, John. And we don't expect <laughs> one this time around. Thank you. Okay. Do you have any comments or further questions about the motion before the board? I do not know. Okay. Further discussion on the motion? All in favor, raise your right hand. It is unanimous. Excellent. So, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Please work with the town planner and the conservation commission and get this one going. So, congratulations. And the only other order of business, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Move. Second. All in favor? Unanimous. Thank you very much, and thank you for your patience tonight. Mm -hmm. Does everyone remember we've got Saturday, Saturday. It's 8 o'clock. Oh, yes. Meet behind the town hall? 8 o'clock. 8 o'clock, and the bus leaves at 8.05, so <coughs> be on time. Funny question. If we have another weekend like last weekend, are we still on? Who we call if there's a problem with weather? I'm going to call you. All right. It's going to be your decision. Okay. My telephone number is in the book. It's 799-1943. I don't want to call you. Also, but also for canceling. Sure, I think you should consider it to be on unless something really major.